Hi everyone, welcome to this video of my top 7 lessons of 2017. Just to warn you, I do have a bit of a sore throat, a bit of a croaky voice, however I was really really keen to you know, put together this video and get it out to you before the end of the year. So hopefully I can get through to the end okay and hopefully you can understand me alright as well. So, we're approaching the end of 2017, there are only a few days left until the end of the year, so it's a really 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 crucial time to actually sit down and look back on the year and think, okay, what are the positives been, what have the negatives been, what could I have done better? And also just to think about some of the lessons, what have you, what will you take away going forward now into 2018? And for me, this year has, you know, been a year full of experiences. You know, I've grown in a lot of ways as well, so I've become a lot more resilient, uh, become a lot more confident in myself as a, as a result of pushing myself out of my comfort zone, met some really, really great people, and also just learnt a lot. And I actually want to share some of these lessons with you today and hopefully they can, you know, help you and encourage you as well in, you know, some challenges that you might be facing at the moment. So number one is be flexible. Now a lot of the time we can get really caught up in expecting something to go a certain way and then freak out when it doesn't. So whether you're managing a situation or you're managing people, you know, just having that mindset, that expectation where things might not always go the way you planned, but that it will be okay. And then if things don't go run as smoothly as expected, that you will be able to um, think of another way that you can approach the situation. So just be really, really flexible. And um, you'll actually find that when you're managing people as well, although you have everything under control and you know what you're doing, you know, the other people might not follow up with what they said they were going to do. But when you take on a flexible approach, people will actually be a lot more receptive and also appreciate it as well. Number two is take action. So if you find that you know, you're know you waiting for that perfect moment where you're going to wake up one morning and feel ready to take on the task ahead, you know the, the task that you've been overthinking about and putting off for a while, well, I'm sorry to break it to you, but that time isn't going to come. The only way you're going to feel ready is just by doing it, just by going forward, just doing it, and only then, when you're, when you're in the zone and, you're, and you've, just, you've just gone for it, that is when you're like, right, now I'm ready, I can do this, and you'll just find yourself being able to take on a lot more. So just take action. Number three is trust your gut. Now, again, whether it's people, whether it's a situation, you can find yourself having a certain feeling, you know, this gut feeling inside of you. Something that doesn't feel right some of the time as well, whether it's someone that you're talking to, you're getting to know, and you just feel like, mm, our energies are not really in sync here, there's something not right about this. But then our mind will play tricks on us and we'll start being quite logical about the situation, you know, thinking of the pros and cons. Or, but it's really important to trust your intuition and there's a reason why your gut feeling is telling you what it is and you know there's there's a there's a really great quote and it's remain true to yourself if you know your own heart you'll always have a friend who does not lie and that's it you know being able to trust yourself being able to trust your own gut because if you don't trust yourself how can you expect others to trust you in no a judgment so number four is don't compare yourself to people who are more successful than you so, you know, we might be at the beginning of our journey, but we end up comparing ourselves to people who are like 10, 15, 20 years ahead of us in the game. Why is that? We often fail to remember that they also once started out with amateurs. They also, you know, had to undergo a lot of knockbacks. They weren't confident initially as well. So just remember that, you know, if you're going to compare yourself to people, actually look at their journey, how, like, how they started, where they were at the beginning before they got to where they were now. And if you really want to look at where they are now and compare yourself to them, well, actually use it in a way that's going to inspire you and uplift you, not to put yourself down, to actually think, okay, well, how have they become so successful? What are their habits? What do they do? How can I learn from their mistakes? And number five is failure is a part of success. You know, it's not the opposite of success. It's part of the success. You need to undergo failure. So, you know, you've got knocked back. Okay, you didn't, things didn't go the way you expected it. So what? Just pick yourself up and try again, as Lydia says. <laughs> um, so just pick yourself up and move forward, and you'll find that the most successful people actually get knocked back a number of times, and they keep going. The only way you'll fail is actually if you give up. Is something that I go on a lot about, and that is step out of your comfort zone. You know, whether it's doing something like public speaking or writing a blog for the first time, even going through a breakup, you know, you're in a state of discomfort. And when you're in that uncomfortable state, when you feel very uncomfortable in yourself, that is when you know that you're in a state of growth. 
you know that you're becoming a lot stronger, a lot more resilient and tougher as a person. And once you do things that you know you found you thought that were really scary initially and you putting off for a long time and you overcome them, you feel such a great sense of achievement, even to the point where you just feel motivated to take on even more. You're like, right, I've done that. What else can I do now? Bring on more. Because your confidence has massively increased as a result. So step out of your comfort zone. Another thing with that as well is, you know, just think to yourself, are you happy? You might be comfortable, but are you happy? If yes, then great. But if you're not, just think, well, if you're comfortable right now, if you're in a state of you know, discomfort at the moment, well, you're going to be feeling like that now, or you're going to be feeling like that whether you're unhappy or actually moving forward into something where you'll actually feel a lot more positive. So isn't it better to feel uncomfortable knowing that you're moving forward? And number seven has been a really, really important lesson for me this year. And that is you are what you are, not what you want. So for you, think about what it is that you want. And then just think about who that person is that you need to become in order to achieve that, in order to have that, in order to do that. It's so easy for us to sit back and say, I want a business. Why don't I have my own business? But then the reality is you're spending all your evenings and weekends watching Netflix. Or, you know, you often complain about the fact that you're that you're surrounded by negative people. But look what you do. Maybe you spend a lot of your time actually criticizing other people, putting other people down, having a really negative outlook on life. It's not a coincidence that, that you're surrounded by those similar people. So whatever it is, you know, that, that you want in the new year, we're approaching the new year now, just think about that. And whether it's, you know, wanting to have more positive people around you in your life, what can you do? Start being more grateful, for example. If you want to set up your own business, Think about the mindset that you need to develop. What kind of mindset do you need to develop in order to start your own business? Whether it's, you know, getting up, showing up, making sacrifices. So, on a final note then, um, as I said, we're going to see you now, so it's the best time to think about what you want for the new year and to think about what changes you need to make in your life in order to, in order to achieve those things. So, I hope you found this video useful and... With the last few days coming up, it's a great time for you to just sit down and reflect on the main lessons that you've taken away in this new year as well. Happy New Year!